Libya's suspended foreign minister Najla Mangouch has fled to Turkey. Mangouch was suspended by the prime minister following a recent meeting with her Israeli counterpart. Angry protesters also have taken on the streets of Al Zawiya to protest against the meeting. She was also to undergo an administrative investigation by a justice minister chaired commission. Now let's tell you all what has happened. According to reports, the meeting between the two foreign ministers was facilitated by Italian Minister of Foreign Affairs Antonio Tajani. Israel's Foreign Minister Eli Cohen also said in a statement, and I quote here, I spoke with the Foreign Minister about the great potential for the two countries from their relations, unquote. The meeting prompted protests on the street of several Libyan cities and led to the Libyan PM issuing the temporary suspension. Shortly after this, the Libyan Foreign Ministry issued a statement saying that the interaction did not include any discussions, agreements or consultations. It added that the Foreign Minister renewed Libya's complex and absolute rejection of normalisation of ties with Israel. Libya has always denied any diplomatic relations with Israel. One of the main reasons for Libya's antagonism towards Israel has been its support for the Palestinian cause. Like several other North African countries, Libya has a rich Jewish heritage. But during decades of rule by the former Libyan leader Gaddafi, who was a strong supporter of the Palestinian cause, thousands of Jews were expelled from Libya and many synagogues or Jewish temples were destroyed. Gaddafi was overthrown and killed in 2011 by a NATO-backed uprising. Even now, the country is split politically among rival administrations. There are Tripoli governments in the West and another in the East, backed by the military strongman Khalifa Haftar. Even though Israel has normalised relations with some Arab countries in recent years, as part of its US-backed deals known as the Abraham Accords, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's hardline government has time and time again come under intense criticism from Arab states. This is because of the surging violence in the West Bank and for backing the expansion of Jewish settlements in the territory. Well, for more on this, our correspondent Jordi Cohen joins us live. And Jordi, what have the reactions been in Libya and Israel to the meetings? And whether was it official, as Israel said, or unofficial, as Libya has said? Hi, Oliver. So in the Israeli statement, um, it said that Israel and Libya's foreign minister officially met and it was a first historic meeting. Now in Libya, popular opinion is anti-Israel and the country is dealing with its own internal conflicts so it's sensitive to public opinion. And the announcement led to some rioting, the burning of the Israeli flag. Now the foreign ministry then issued a statement saying that it wasn't an official or a prepared meeting and ruled out any steps towards normalization. The Prime Minister, as you said, suspended the Foreign Minister and launched a probe into this matter. And the Foreign Minister has reportedly left, or some would say fled, the country. Now, in Israel, there was a positive response to the announcement on cooperation. There have been some commentators now who are suggesting a poor handling by the Foreign Ministry to issue a public statement. And others are suggesting that this was done in accord with Libya, who then backtracks given the public re reaction in the country there. So do you think the Israel foreign minister should have been more sensitive given the situation? So Raphael Luzon, he's the chair of the Union of Libyan Jewry. Um, he said that he'd facilitated meetings some six years back between senior Israeli and Libyan officials paving the way for last week's meeting. Now he suggested that radical Islamists have forced this U-turn by the Libyan government, but he also suggested that Israel could have consulted better with Libya on making the announcement. 
Um, some commentators are talking about the reaction of people in Libya, highlighting A, how fragile Libya is internally, but also B, how bold the leaders were in the UAE, Bahrain, Morocco and Sudan to be the first to sign up to the Abraham Accords. Uh, commentators coming from Israel. Now remember we've recently been hearing about a potential Israeli-Saudi normalization deal. We've already heard of negotiations underway there. Saudi Arabia has opened up its airspace to flights from Israel. Now whether or not normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia happens is not thought to be um, likely to be affected by the protests in Libya. But on the other hand, whether or not there's normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia is thought that it would have a big impact on other Muslim countries potentially normalization, normalizing with Israel. But it remains to be seen what happens there. Our correspondent, Jordi Cohen, many thanks for your insight there.